What's up guys, it's me, Tiff, and apparently Sam Bankman fried has begun trading pouches of mackerel as currency in jail. Yes, mackerel, like the fish. For a bit of context, I got to interview Sam several times while he was still on house arrest, but he got thrown in jail in August this year after repeatedly pushing the boundaries of his bail conditions. He contacted former employees like Ryan Miller, the former GC of FTX. He got caught using a VPN to allegedly watch the Super Bowl, and the final straw for Judge Lewis Kaplan was Sam leaking some of Caroline Ellison's private writings to the New York Times, which the judge saw as potential witness tampering. So Sam was thrown in jail in August, went to trial and was found guilty on all seven of his criminal charges and remains in jail at MDC Brooklyn as he awaits his sentencing in March 2024. I attended every single day of Sam Bakeman frieds criminal trial in person and on the first day of trial he arrived with a fresh new haircut. I actually drew this picture of Sam's new haircut on the first day of trial but there are no phones, cameras, or electronics allowed in the courtroom so there are no real life pictures of what Sam's new haircut looks like. But let's just say the signature long curly locks are gone. Well, a According to the Wall Street Journal, Sam is learning the fundamentals of prison economics because apparently he traded four pouches of mackerel, or mac as they're called in jail, to pay a fellow inmate to cut his hair ahead of his criminal trial. Smoking and tobacco products have been banned in federal jail, so apparently pouches of mackerel have replaced cigarettes as a federal jailhouse currency. Inmates purchase pouches of preserved mackerel in commissary to pay for services from one another. Apparently, a pouch of mackerel fillets currently costs $1.30, up 30% from $1 in 2020. Bill Baroni, a prison consultant, told the Wall Street Journal that when Sam moves from jail to a federal prison, he will likely bring his mackerel packets with him, and also added that the Mac currency system is far more stable than crypto. And for more updates on Sam's life in jail, based on a few people I've spoken with, it sounds like Sam is in sort of a separate unit intended for more high-profile inmates away from the general prison population. According to the Wall Street Journal, Sam shares a dormitory with some somewhat well-known inmates, including Juan Orlando Hernandez, a former Honduran president who allegedly took bribes to protect drug traffickers who shipped cocaine to the United States. So that's fun. Hernandez pled not guilty after being extradited to the United States and is currently awaiting his criminal trial. According to Hernandez's defense attorney, he and Sam Bankman fried have had some cordial conversations with one another at the jail. And I'm actually very pleased and surprised to see that Sam might be making a few friends in jail. Sam's other unit mates include a recently convicted former top cop of Mexico and Genero Garcia Luna, Mexico's former secretary of public security who was convicted earlier this year of helping the Sinaloa cartel smuggle more than 50 tons of cocaine into the United States. So that's also very fun. And while Sam can obviously no longer trade crypto, apparently he's been giving crypto tips to the guards. Honestly, socially, it sounds like Sam is doing better than I expected. But even though Sam seems to be in a sort of special unit for more high-profile inmates, obviously MDC Brooklyn is a far cry from the $30 million penthouse he was living in in the Bahamas. MDC Brooklyn has been criticized by defense lawyers and the union representing jail guards for its poor conditions and for being severely understaffed. Honestly, though, I think that the poor living conditions are probably on the lesser end of Sam's qualms with being in jail. I got to speak with Sam pretty shortly after he was released from prison in the Bahamas and was extradited to the United States. And the prison he was in in the Bahamas had a really bad reputation. Fox Hill Prison in the Bahamas was known for being infested with rats, maggots, and insects, and apparently some inmates removed human waste by bucket and often developed bed sores by lying on the bare ground. Granted, Sam was in the medical wing when he was in prison in the Bahamas, so it probably wasn't as bad as these descriptions, but still pretty gross. But I actually remember Sam telling me that he didn't mind the prison conditions being disgusting because that's something he could get used to. He told me that the hardest part of being in prison in the Bahamas was his inability to put his thoughts into words that other people could listen to, and basically his inability to have any impact on the world. And he said that the number one thing he would care about and miss the most was the lack of internet access. Well, apparently right now, Sam does have access to a specialized laptop that allows him to review legal material. Granted, I assume this is a very specific privilege for a limited time frame because technically he has a second trial coming up in March and he does need to prepare for his legal defense. However, apparently Sam and other inmates at MDC are allowed to use computers in a room that has desks separated by plastic dividers. The Wall Street Journal are 
article wasn't specific as to whether or not these computers have internet access, but based on my conversations with former prison inmates like Martin Shkreli, who has actually spent time at MDC Brooklyn, it doesn't sound like inmates just have casual access to internet. And I recently had a conversation with Matt Cox, who spent 13 years in federal prison, and we discussed this topic, so I'll include a clip. You know, obviously there is no internet. You know, there's no, like, he's already got major problems, I'm sure. But when you're actually in a prison, you can, you have access to a computer, but it's only for the purposes of downloading music and, you know, being able to monitor your commissary account, uh, monitor how many true links, which are minutes, right, on your phone that you can use. You get three, about, roughly about 300 minutes a month. So that's about 10 minutes a day you can use. You can only use the phone for 15 minutes anyway. Do you mean like to make phone calls, he can only use the phone for 15 minutes at a time? Yes. Oh, wow. So if he were to make, if he were to call four people a day for 15 minutes, he could maybe go five days wow. and then he'd just be out. You're not calling anyone. You can email people through the Core Links system, right? I, I think their side is called True Links. Our, the out here, I think it's called Core Links. Uh -huh. So they can email you but it's like they email you to the website and then i have to out here go to the website to read their email this conversation with matt was actually really enlightening really informative and even got emotional at points so i actually highly recommend you listen to it if you're remotely interested in how sam bakeman fried might do in prison continuing on though as most of you may know sam bakeman fried is indeed a vegan for months it was reported that sam was subsisting solely on peanut butter bread and water because the jail was not accommodating his vegan diet i got to see sam in person since i attended his trial and he honestly lost a lot of weight some journalists were even describing him as gaunt which i don't think i would go that far but he looked much skinnier for a long time, Sam was also having trouble getting his proper dosage of prescribed Adderall. Well, apparently now his access to food and medication have since been resolved and he gets vegetarian meals at MDC. Honestly, I think this is a good thing. I know a lot of people made fun of him for his vegan meals and I'm personally not vegan and I kind of think it's stupid, but I do think that all inmates should have access to proper medication and proper meals based on their diets. I know some people have religious diets and, you know, are vegan or whatever inmates are human beings they should have access to their food and medication apparently inmates at mdc are typically confined to their units and don't move freely around the facility instead of eating in communal cafeterias like in some prisons meals are delivered to individual units and i think this is probably a good thing for sam because thankfully for him he's in a special high profile sort of unit but if he had to integrate with the general prison population i just don't see him doing too well sam is self-admittedly a shy awkward nerdy introverted guy so so I feel like he'd probably get roughed up a bit or maybe extorted. Yeah, I think it's probably good that he eats in his cell. <laughs> MDC inmates are allowed to purchase food, clothes, and toiletries through the jail's commissary, and a list of commissary items shows that peanut butter costs $4.15, a pair of sneakers costs $79.95, and an MP3 player is $88.40. So hopefully Sam can download some Katy Perry and Taylor Swift. That sounds funny, but I think that's really what Sam listens to. <laughs> and Sam is allowed non attorney visitors once a week, but apparently MDC staffing shortages can lead to canceled visiting hours. I have not been able to visit Sam. I have not directly spoken with him since he was thrown in jail at MDC. Prison consultant Bill Baroni told the Wall Street Journal that once Sam is relocated to a federal prison to serve his sentence, he will likely have more freedom of movement, in addition to better access to educational programming and recreation, and that when he is sentenced, his life will get better, since he'll be out of the facility with the most violent people. Sam's PR guy, Mark Botnick says Sam is doing the best he can under the circumstances. And obviously, Sam must be going through an incredibly hard time. But knowing Sam a bit, I don't see him becoming suicidally depressed. Sam certainly struggles with depression, but he's described it more as anhedonia or the lack of positive emotions and the inability to feel happiness. And he said he typically doesn't experience extreme lows. Granted, I don't think he's ever experienced anything remotely like what he's going through right now, and I don't think most human beings have. Facing the possibility of spending the remainder of your entire life in prison must be the most bleak and daunting thought imaginable. Sam obviously hurt a lot of people, and I'm someone who's actually lost a lot of money in another crypto collapse, Celsius. 
but I'm personally not someone who takes pleasure and joy in the thought of someone who's a non-violent criminal spending the rest of their lives in prison. That is obviously not a popular sentiment, and I do believe in punishment and prison to some extent as a deterrent, but as someone who's lost a lot of my own money to another collapse, I'm personally way more focused on restitution and clawbacks and getting back as much of my money as possible. I personally don't sit here overjoyed at the prospect of a nonviolent criminal going to prison until the day they die. I feel pretty positive that a lot of people watching my channel will strongly disagree with that sentiment. I am very aware that some people want Sam to get murdered and raped and whatever in jail. And I know that I smile and I laugh a lot in my videos because that's first of all just my personality and is also just my reaction to trauma. Like I was laughing and cracking jokes when I found out I lost $200,000 to Celsius and I was also going through the worst period of my life and was thinking about committing suicide around that time because I was going through a really bad breakup and then I lost all of my money but I was cracking jokes to my friends around that time but that's just how I deal with things in private I will cry and think about ending my life or whatever but in public or when I'm talking to people I will always laugh because I just don't like bringing other people's mood down maybe that's a weird response maybe I need to go to therapy probably but that's just my personality sorry anyway this video took a weird turn but in the next week or so I'll be chatting with a former mobster who was actually in jail at MDC with Sam Bakeman Freed and was recently released. Apparently the two had some personal interactions, so if you have any questions that you'd like me to ask him, then please let me know down below in the comments. I've actually already had chats with Matthew Cox, a former conman who spent 13 years in federal prison, as well as Martin Shkreli, who's actually spent time at MDC Brooklyn, about how Sam Bakeman Freed might fare in prison. If you want to watch either of those, they're already on my YouTube channel and I'll link them down below in the description box. I love you all so very, very much and I'll talk to you all very, very soon. Bye!